Right then. Good afternoon. Good morning. I'm not sure what time it is where you are, but I'm here joined by everybody's favourite German, Guido Schaefer here, a chief reporter <laughs> at Leipziger Volkszeitung, just to have a, a bit of a chat, really, about uh, Ralph Ragnick, because let's be honest, Guido, quite a lot's uh, changed. Uh, quite a lot's happened, really, since we last had a conversation before Christmas. Um, with everything that's happened in the last few weeks with Jesse Lingard, with Anthony Martial, with Ralph actually bringing in um, his own personal media advisor now, uh, Raphael nice. Hernigstein. Uh, I want to speak to you about all of that. And we're also going to speak about, uh, in a little bit anyway, about Ralph's relationship with the clubs at uh, Leipzig and at Hoffenheim as well. Because at Manchester yes. United, a lot of fans feel like he's, um, he's fighting against, he's, he's swimming upstream, if you, if you want to call it that. But how are you doing, yes. my friend? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I had a nice night, a few drinks yesterday, and uh, I slept very well, and I'm well prepared for Manchester United. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I said, as I always say, thank you very much for giving your time up to chat today. Um, welcome. But yeah, I mean, with Ralph, uh, obviously the, the most recent game we had wasn't exactly the best one, was it? We, uh, we, we lost against Middlesbrough, uh, who were in the league below us on penalties. A very frustrating game, but have you managed to, to watch any of United's recent games and any of Ragnick's football? Yes, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm able to, to watch every, nearly every match. And uh, I think it wasn't so bad against Middlesbrough. After 90 minutes, uh, uh, Man Manchester United um, had so many uh, chances. They have to win 5-1 or 6-1. And yes, in the penalties, uh, then they, they lost the match. And this is... It's it's not so nice for 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 Ralph also because this he I think he wanted to uh, to win uh, the, the the cup and it's it would be very important for him to to win a cup and uh, now he he has to focus on the qualify to to the Champions League. Yeah, we've got the Champions League coming up very shortly with Atletico Madrid. Now, the, the first thing I really want to speak to you about is Something that we've seen in the last few weeks at Manchester United, Anthony Martial was the first one. I'd explain the situation to you. Um, I, I'm not sure what game it was before. I think it might have been Wolves, uh, but Martial wasn't inside the squad. And after, uh, Ragnick said uh, he didn't make himself available. And after that, Anthony Martial decided to go on Instagram and say, look, I've always made myself, as myself available. Basically yes. calling, calling Ralph Ragnick a liar. And the same thing has happened with Jesse Lingard in the last couple of weeks. Um, have you managed to speak to Ralph or anybody close to Ralph about this ongoing situation? Because from everything that I've seen from Ralph and every time we've talked, Ralph doesn't really strike me as a liar. He, he, he's no. a very, very honest individual. So I yes. don't see I don't see what he would uh, I don't see how he would gain by lying about this situation. Yes, what, yes. What's, what's your opinion on it? And as I said, if you've if you've spoken to Ralph or anybody close to him at all. No, we had a, a short message, yes, a little short message about it. I know exactly that Ralph isn't a liar. He, he wasn't a liar in, in, his, in his long and great career. And uh, we work very close together, uh, 10 years, I think. Uh, um, and uh, he never, he never lied, never. And uh, I think if perhaps it was uh, a wrong information that he had in, in these two cases, but uh, that uh, Ralph Rangnick, lies that is for me it's it's impossible yeah it's 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 definitely how he's come across and that the honesty for a lot of manchester united fans is very very refreshing uh to actually hear a manager it's it's not as if he's he's not being clever with his words he's just saying it exactly yes. how it is like yes. for example uh his most recent one yesterday he was i'll read i'll read the quote out for you i've got it right here he said if manchester united have not won a title in the last 10 years there must be some good reasons for that. Yes. Right now, we are fourth in the league and everybody on the inside of the club, including myself, would be happy if we finish fourth at the end of the season. Yes. Yes. And he's not wrong because things really, at Manchester United, it's, we all felt that we were only one signing away from competing for the Premier League and everything that has happened this season. And Ralph is obviously going upstairs after he finishes his, uh, in his interim position. What's your feelings on that? Because... A lot of United fans are, are very concerned. We can all see and hear and understand that Ragnick is a very intellectual man. That he yes. wants that he wants what's um, what's good for Manchester United. Yes. 
But is he going to be able to do that inside our club? That, that, that was a question I wanted to ask you and what you think about that. I think, uh, yeah, it's true. Uh, Ralph um, um, is now, I think, two or three months in Manchester United. And um, I think the structure from Manchester United is not as good as a, as a structure would be uh, uh, um, in, a, in, a, in a world-class club. There are many, many things that are not working in, 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 a, in a way like in perhaps, okay, Man U fans like Liverpool or Man City. Well, that's true. And, <laughs> yes. And, and Ralph worked in, 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 in Hoffenheim and also in, in Leipzig. And um, he was the, the great mastermind there. And he has good stuff around around uh, his his team and uh, and also the sport chief they work together close together with Ralph and I think in in, in Manchester this is uh, one of the the main problems uh, that the, the structure isn't there so so perfect to to have success and to 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 win the, the great challenges and it's not a wonder that uh, Manchester United didn't want Every, anything in the last 10 years. The reasons, <laughs> yes, the reasons are there. Now, um, I suppose a question that a, a lot of United fans would like to know a, a bit of information on is, obviously he had success for Ralph Rannick isn't necessarily about winning league titles. It's about building a club. So Hoffenheim yes. and Leipzig are the two great examples of that with Ralph. Now, when he went into those clubs, what sort of, relationship did he have with the boards and, and, and the clubs that he was working with did they all work alongside each other did did he have to sort of because it looks like he's fighting at Manchester United it looks like he doesn't have much support and he's kind of on his own well, what was the case at, at Hoffenheim and Leipzig was it a case of everybody was pulling in the same direction and helping yes Ralph? yes yes in this way they are pulling in the, in the same uh, d- direction and helping Ralph because they all know that Ralph is, is is the mastermind, the best man. He knows what is what is necessary for a club. He knows uh, which coaches he he want to to have in the club, and also with system they want to play in the in this in this team with squad you need for this football. And this is also one one problem in in in, in Manchester now. Ralph's system he want to to attack and to, and, and to make a powerful football and. Um, Okay, it's hard to say, but with Ronaldo, it isn't it isn't possible to speak uh, to, to play uh, to play this system. He's a great footballer, but he's he's not able to run so fast and so uh, so great distance that is forced for the for the Manchester United style. And I think it's a very very big fight for for Ralph. The 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 the, the war against uh, Ronaldo he isn't he cannot he cannot win. And also the war with the with the uh, with the structure in Manchester United. Um, this club has to be reeled up uh, completely new, and uh, I I don't know that uh, of if if Ralph is is powerful enough and uh, to continue his work uh, after the season. From from what you've uh, from what you've watched in working with Ralph for ten years at, at Leipzig, what do you think he had at Leipzig? That he currently doesn't have at Manchester United that he that he'll need if he's going to be successful in in modernising our club because we do need to be modernised. Yeah, in in uh, in Leipzig, uh, he has the they 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 bring the the red carpet when he when he arrived in 2012 and uh, the club was in the fourth I think fourth division and they had in this time they had money but they have no idea to to uh, to have uh, to uh, copy with the with the challenges and to have a, a system or a philosophy there's nothing and ralph when he he came to to leipzig um, they all made everything every wish from him they make this true and uh, and he he made uh, the the most of ralph's decisions are completely right in in case of coaches players the system the tactic and uh, therefore, uh, the success speaks for for Ralph and for his decisions. And I think in in, in Manchester, it's for him it's very very difficult to to create things. Okay, he's able to to, to train with the with the team on the pitch, but also he 
I think it was very, very necessary for Manchester that they that they buy one or two players in the in the winter transfer uh, mm. period. And for me, it's unbelievable that they made nothing. Yeah, but touching on that, when uh, we first heard about Ralph, uh, he came in in November, obviously, and we're going into December. We were we were told as fans uh, that he was going to be supported uh, by the board. So, it, as far as you know, is, was that was that something that that Ralph? was told as well when he came into the club that he was going to be supported in the January transfer window because obviously it's not a window where you can sign all the best players in the world but yes. it could certainly be a window where you strengthen a key part of the squad which is midfield and obviously Haidara we've spoke about Haidara before you actually felt yes. that he wasn't quite ready for Manchester United but was Ralph sort of told that he was going to be supported I think uh, <laughs> yes. When when he when he got the the offer from Manchester United, uh, I'm very sure that uh, uh, they they promised him to support him in any way. And uh, the reality is uh, quite different from from that uh, promises. I think. And uh, but uh, Ralph is also a great fighter. Said, okay, it is like it is, and uh, I am focused now to reach this. Fucking, uh, it's not allowed to say this fucking oh, you fourth can say place. What you, want. you can say what you want. <laughs> yes, yes. And I think, yes, he will manage the fourth place. And uh, tonight in, in Burnley, they will win uh, uh, a, a, a triumph. Uh, one nil is enough. And yeah. I think in the match, it's more control now in the in the match from Manchester United. It's not so attractive, but it's not more control in the defense and the office. I think this is the impact that he. Uh, brings to to Manchester United. We've we've certainly seen that. If you compare how we played in our first game against Crystal Palace to that first sixty minutes against Middlesbrough, it was brilliant. And if our finishing yes. was better, if Ronaldo was finishing was better, Bruno's finishing yeah. was better, it would have been three, four, five nil at half time. Yes. A very different conversation. Yes. But yes, to, to touch on what you said there earlier is that this idea that uh, Ragnick's got a bit of a, not a war with Ronaldo, but it's it's a it's a struggle and a fight that he's got going on. And the same with the board. Um, obviously, Ralph is an extremely honest individual. That, that's why I found all the things that Lingard and Martial said so strange. Because if there's yes. one thing I would say about Ralph since he's come in, is he's been nothing but honest in terms of how he's approached the media and what he said. Yes. But he's now brought in uh, Raphael Hernigstein, uh, who's a German broadcaster, of course, uh, works yeah. with The Athletic. He's now taken a six-month sabbatical from The Athletic to work yes. as Ralph Ragnick's personal media advisor now do you find that appointment strange what, what do you know about that appointment because it, does that mean that ralph's going to be less honest it, does he feel like he needs to protect himself here i, I don't think so i think it, it isn't a big deal and uh, for for your information also it, they they work uh, together since january uh, and uh, i think the, the one one or the second of january and they know each other since I think seven or eight years. They trust each other. Uh, Raphael Lonigstein is a famous journalist also, and uh, he's he's very good connected in the in the Premier League. He loves football, like uh, Ralf Rangnick loves football. And um, I, I spoke also with uh, with Raphael uh, about this uh, uh, deal with with Ralf with uh, with Manchester United, and uh, his 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 job is to to have the, the connection to the German media also. There are many, many uh, newspapers. They want to speak with Ralf Rang. They want interviews and many uh, requests. And uh, Raphael Honigstein organized these requests. And, uh, uh, but until today, uh, Ralf did nothing in this uh, case. No interview for, for Süddeutsche Zeitung or for the Kicker and also for the My Leipziger Volkszeitung <laughs> because... He is he is focused on his on his job in in, in Manchester, and also he didn't give a big interview to a to a Manchester uh, journal or newspaper, mm. I think. And uh, yes, uh, I think it isn't so a big a big uh, uh, story with with Raphael how next time, but uh, they are both Germans. Perhaps they sit together in a dinner in in, in the hotel in Manchester or in, in London and and have a meal together and speak. In German, yes, German language, uh, and uh, I, I don't think that uh, Ralph needs um, needs a preparation in uh, half an hour before a press conference that he speak with Ralph with Honigstein. 
uh, Honig said, what can I say? No, Ralph is intelligent. He's, he's not a storyteller. He tells the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts. Yeah, well, that's that's the best thing. That's that, that's that's a great clip, what you just said there, because sometimes the truth really does hurt. And for a lot of United fans, <laughs> yes. a lot of what we've seen in the last, uh, geez, eight, nine years has, has hurt us a lot. But yes. I, I've got, uh, some, some are calling uh, me quite naive when I'm saying I'm optimistic about the future with Ralph in, but um, what, what would you say, you know, from your experience of working alongside Ralph for over a decade, you know him more than any of us, will ever know him and you've seen the good work he's done what would you say to to any united fans that sort of don't feel that ragnick is going to be capable of, of bringing this change that we need what, what would you say to persuade them i think it's uh, too too he has not enough time when when he will quit the job as a, as a t team manager or the, the coach in, in in manchester united um in, in summer uh, perhaps he will reach I, i'm i'm I hope he, he will reach, Manchester United will reach a Champions League fourth place. Uh, but afterwards, he, he will uh, quit his job as, as a manager. And I don't know if he wants to work as a consultant uh, um, after the summertime. When he's not able, when he's not allowed to create things, to make decisions, then it's the, not the right place, not the right club for Ralf Rangnick. So do you think there's a chance that um, Ralph would walk away from that consultancy position if Manchester United don't deliver promises of yes. you know giving him the power. I think so. I think so. Ralph is is not interested in in money. He's interested in in success and creation, new things and uh, successful things. And um, when uh, the things are not changing in in, in Manchester, I'm sure that uh, he will quit his job there. Um, um, finally, also as a consultant, it's, it makes no sense for him in this uh, con, uh, construct now. Do you so? Do you think? Um, do you think it's then up to Manchester? Do you? Because that that worries me. That really worries me. Because I I feel that my optimism uh, as a Manchester United fan is heavily based on Ralph Ragnick being part of our board structure for yes. the next couple of years. We need him. We're desperate for him. Yes, but it kind of goes against what the owners want, if you know what I mean. It takes a little bit of power away from the owners, and that's yes. why fans want it so bad. What do you think? I mean, there's nothing that fans can do. Is it just up to the board to, to agree? Because th this, this idea of a consultancy position, it's very, it's very vague, isn't it? It's not really a, a football director. It's not a sporting director. You're just a con who, are you, who are you consulting? Who are you speaking to? Like, there is no structure at Manchester United. I suppose that's the chaos. That's the problem, isn't it? I think the Glazer family, they, sh they should speak. They should meet Ralph Rangnick. They should speak with him about his uh, opinion, about his aims and uh, his, his problems, uh, the difficulties. And uh, when they are intelligent, then they will decide. Uh, they make uh, Ralph Rangnick stronger and, and power more powerful. And they give him more more. Um, more things to decide and uh, I think the future will be nice um, in Manchester United when Ralph uh, will be uh, the the most important man in the in the club but I don't know if the Glazers are intelligent enough have they this did they does they love football like we love my friend I don't no, know they don't no they don't they love money my friend that's all they that's all they're interested <laughs> oh, in. I, I love also money but I, I, I love, love money, money too yes. <laughs> yeah everyone loves money to be fair but um, yes. if I can ask one final question what yes. sort of what sort of relationship did uh, Ralph have with the owners of uh, Leipzig and the owners of, of Hoffenheim was it a very close relationship with both of them yes yes in the in the early times very very close also to Dietmar Hopp in in Hoffenheim but after a few years I think after four or five years they fight also uh, against each other because Dietmar Hopp said um, oh it's enough to reach the four five or six place in the Bundesliga and Ralph says no no I want to climb up I want to win titles and then they fight against each other after four or five years and uh, also in Leipzig Dietrich Mateschitz a great boss from Red Bull he uh, they he uh, engaged Ralf in 2012 and they gave him much money and much uh, places uh, space to to decide and to create and 
I think in 2020, 2000, yes, 2020, uh, Mateschitz's opinion uh, changed a little bit and uh, he thought that Ralf is not uh, so important uh, for for uh, for uh, Red Bull uh, Leipzig and uh, yes it was a very very great fault uh, it, it's unbelievable for me that uh, a great man like Matschitz came to the opinion that Ralf Ramnik uh, can leave the club and uh, yes and since Ralf went away from Leipzig it goes yeah oh wow down under <laughs> Well, I was feeling really optimistic this morning about the future. Now, now that I've spoken to you, I'm I'm more concerned than ever that that maybe Ralph won't go into that director, consultant type position, whatever it is. But I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong. No, no it's, it's uh, Ralph. Ralph is Ralph is he loves Manchester United. He loves this club and the fans. He said it's the, it's the biggest challenge in the, in the football in the world football. But if if he want to change something, then he must also have uh, the from the bosses at Ralph. Okay, you are the number one. You you can have uh, the space to create things. You you can make decisions. And uh, yes, they have to change their minds. The bosses, I think. Ah, uh, I hope you're right, Guido. And I hope yes. we I hope we speak again in like a few weeks' time. <laughs> You've had a lovely okay. few drinks the night before, and Ralph oh. Ramnick has been given the power. Right, that's what we want. Yes. But look, Good thank luck, you very much. I, I really appreciate your time again, as always today. Uh, and anybody, anybody who wants to follow Guido, I'll leave his Twitter uh, in the description. <laughs> and thank you very much, Guido. I'll speak to you again soon, buddy. Uh, and sorry for my English. Sometimes I didn't find the right word. I lost my brain, I think, because of the drinks. <laughs> and also my English. Good night, my friend. Uh, your English, <laughs> trust me, your English is better than my German, I'll tell you that. Okay. I'll be the Zen. Cheers. Bye-bye.